Hello everyone and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse Lost Planeswalker, and today is day three of our seven day series where we do a commander deck every day for the Lost Caverns of Ixlon. And today we have Sovereigner Oknek Au. Sorry if I butchered that, <laughs> but the, some of the names in the set are very, very uh, confusing to me. This is two, a green and a white, Ledger Creature Cat Noble with Ward 2. And whenever Sovereigner attacks for each creature you control with power greater than that creature's base power, put a number of plus one plus one counters on that creature equal to the difference so how does this ability really work and what it's saying is basically if you've modified that creature any way to give it additional power you are going to then put an additional number of plus one plus one counters on it whenever sovereigner attacks so there's a lot of ways that we can do this you can do it by anthem effects you can do it by plus one plus one counters you can do it on temporary plus one plus ones you can do it with equipment there's any number of ways but the way i decided to focus around this deck was with equipment and anthem effects so as we go through this you're gonna see all of those but an important note i want to make is that when i made this deck i decided to make this a tribal deck a cat tribal deck specifically because of kahir the orphan guard which is a one hybrid green white hybrid green white legendary creature cat beast companion each creature card in your starting deck is a cat element nightmare dinosaur or beast card this has vigilance and each other creature you control that is a cat elemental nightmare dinosaur or beast gets plus one plus one and has vigilance the reason i decided to do this was obviously that's an anthem effect by just playing this all of our cats get plus one plus one and every turn if we attack with our commander they're just going to get buff and that buff is going to get bigger and bigger every turn so let's dive right into it by looking at the land base and starting off just like the rest of these are going to do for the rest of the week it's just going to be forests and plains if you want to go in and really trick out that land base you can but there's not really a lot of cards that are super high demanding to have you know three or four mana pips in it the majority of this deck is white but there is still a lot of green as well so now let's dive into the first category that i'm going to call equipment because these are all the equipment that i'm going to say you should attach for either bonuses indoor to make it harder to block because we want to be able to make our commander unlockable because we don't want it to die obviously so starting off basilisk collar black blade reforged and colossus hammer basilisk collar gives something death touch and lifelink which is super helpful it's not going to give any pluses but if we already put this on a creature that is getting pluses it's just going to get better black blade reforged gives equipped creature plus one plus one for each land you control and we can equip it to our commander to boost it up as well very easily and colossus hammer though it has a high equip cost we're going to give any creature we equip it to plus 10 plus 10 and then on attack it's going to get an additional plus 10 plus 10 making it a huge threat commander's plate dark steel plate and fire shrieker are next commander's plate gives a target creature plus three plus three and gives it protection from everything that's not in our commander's color identity equip it to a commander costs three well if we equip it to a regular creature it costs five dark steel plate gives something indestructible and fire shrieker gives a creature double strike with when we're going to get a lot of big big creatures it's going to be really powerful next up is hammer of nazan Helm of the Host and Lightning Greaves. Hammer of Nizan, when it enters and whenever another equipment enters, is going to auto equip to a creature. And this also gives the creature plus two, plus zero, and indestructible, which is perfect because we care about power for those plus one, plus ones to get added. Helm of the Host, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except it's a token and isn't legendary. If a good creature is legendary, and it also gains haste, which is super important because if we can make multiple copies of our commander, all of those triggering are just going to cause all of our plus one plus ones to just double and then double and then double again so it's going to be a very frightening combo if you can get helm of the host on your commander and lightning greaves gives a creature haste and shroud just for some subtle protection next up is luxodon warhammer mask of memory and mithril coat luxodon warhammer gives equipped creature plus three plus zero trample and lifelink remember that's what we care about the more power we have that's when we care about putting the plus one plus ones on the trample and lifelink is also is going to be super helpful mask of memory says when it deals combat damage to a player you can draw two and then discard a card and mithril coat just gives something indestructible at flash speed and if it's a legendary we can equip it right away shadow spear skull clamp and swift foot boots are next shadow spear one of my favorite equipment i pretty much put in every deck for how good it is equip creature gets plus one plus one has trample and lifelink and then permanence your opponent control for one mana can lose hexproof and indestructible skull clamp is going to give us plus one to power which is great so we also get the buff if we put it on a creature that's a little bigger or if we are creating one ones we can just sack those one ones to draw cards and swift foot boots 
also gives Hexproof in haste. Next up, we have Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Hearth and Home, and Sword of the Animist. Sword of Feast and Famine gives protection from black and green, and a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, discard a card, and you untap all your lands. Sword of Hearth and Home is going to give us protection from green and white, and if we pair that with Commander's Plate, we have protection from everything. But when a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own, then you can search your library for a basic land and put both those cards onto the battlefield under your control and then shuffle. And Sword of the Animist gives a creature plus one plus one. When a equipped creature attacks, you may search for a basic land, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And our last two cards, and probably our best evasion cards in the deck, are Trailblazer's Boots and Whisper Silk Cloak. Trailblazer's Boots say, equipped creature has non-basic land walk, meaning that if your opponent has anything that isn't a non-basic land on their battlefield, they can't block you, which is super, super cool. And Whisper Silk Cloak might be even better because it says this creature can't be blocked and has shroud, meaning it can't be targeted either. So now I want to dive into the cats in this deck because I found there was a lot of really good cats that work for this deck. You know, you could build this deck in any number of ways because it doesn't say specifically cats. It's just creatures with power, you know, greater or plus one plus ones. You could do any number of things but this worked really well for a cat tribal deck so that's the way i wanted to build it so first off we have alms collector arabo roar of the world or arcbound mauser alms collector has flash if an opponent would draw two or more cards instead you and that player each draw a card arabor roar of the world is the eminence cat commander from commander 2017 it's a very cool commander that says at the beginning of combat on your turn if this is in your command zone or on the battlefield another cat gets plus three plus three and whenever another cat you control attacks you may pay one a green and a white if you do it gains trample and gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is its power so this not only can buff our creatures on being on the battlefield we can also additionally buff it wherever its power is an arc bound mauser is a really fun cat creature because it has lifelink and modular one meaning that it's already going to get buffed every time we attack with our commander because its base power is zero and it's going to get plus one plus one. Balan, Wandering Knight, Basari Acolyte, and Bola Slinger are next. Balan, Wandering Knight is a Ledger Cat Knight that has first strike and Balan, Wandering Knight has double strike as long as two or more equipment are attached to it. And then for one and a white, attach all, all equipment you control to Balan. So this is a super cool effect you can use at any time during combat to just make a huge combat trick. Maybe your opponent forgets that you can do this and you can just equip everything to it and just swing in. Bassery Acolyte is a creature clat cleric with lifelink and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two other target creatures you control. And Bola Slinger has backup one. And whenever this creature attacks, tap target artifact or creature an opponent controls. So backup ones means we put a plus one plus one counter on it and until the end of our turn, it gains the following ability under backup. Next, we have Burmaz, King of Oroskos, Feline Sovereign, and Healer of the Pride. Brimaz has Vigilance. Whenever Brimaz attacks, put a 1-1 white cat soldier creature token with Vigilance onto the battlefield. Attacking, whenever Brimaz blocks a creature, put a 1-1 cat soldier creature token with Vigilance onto the battlefield, blocking that creature. Feline Sovereign says other cats you control get plus one plus one and have protection from dogs. And whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. This is a great way to buff up our entire board and also just eradicate all of the artifacts and enchantments on the board. And Healer of the Pride is a cat cleric that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, you gain two life. Next up is Jazal Goldmane, Kemba the Enduring, and Kemba Ka Regent. Jazal Goldmane has first strike, and for three white white attacking creatures you control, get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Being able to buff up our entire board, and then with our commander, buff it up again is just so overpowering. Kemba Ka Enduring says, when it enters, or another cat enters, you control, you may attach an equipment to that creature. Equip creatures get plus one plus one, and three white white create a two two white cat creature token. And then Kemba Ka Regent says, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a two two white cat creature token, for each equipment attached to Kemba Ka region. Next up, we have King of the Pride, Leonin Vanguard, and Lion Sash. King of the Pride gets other cats plus two, plus one, which just turns all of the Savannah Lions into double as big Savannah Lions, basically. Leonin Vanguard says at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures, it gets plus one, plus one, and you gain a life. And Lion Sash can be used to exile cards from a graveyard. Whenever we exile a permanent card, we put a plus one, plus one counter on Lion Sash. We can also reconfigure it to give equipped creature plus one, plus one for each counter on Lion Sash. Next up is Loam Lion, Miri Weatherlight Duelist, and Nizan Reaver Bladesmith. Loam Lion says you get plus one plus two for as long as you control a forest. 
Miri Weatherlight Duelist has first strike, and whenever Miri Weatherlight Duelist attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. And as long as Miri Weatherlight Duelist is tapped, no more than one creature can attack each combat. Nazan Reaver Bladesmith is a legendary creature cat artificer. With Nazan Reaver Bladesmith enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card, you reveal it. If you revealed a card named Hammer of Nazan this way, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put the card into your hand, then shuffle your library. Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you may tap target creature defending player control. So next we have Phantom Nishoba, Pride Sovereign, and Pride Malkin. Phantom Nishoba has Trample. It enters with seven plus one plus one counters on it, meaning its power is zero. So as long as we attack with our commander, it's gonna get an additional seven and then 14 and just go up from there. Whenever it deals damage, you gain that much life. And if damage would be dealt to this, you just remove a plus one plus one counter from it. Pride Sovereign gets plus one plus one counter for each cat you control and white tap exert it. Create two one one white cat creature token with lifelink and pride malkin says when it enters battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature you control and then each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample just making our entire board huge lethal threats super easily next up is progenitor exarch quisali pride mage and Ruksha Golden Club. Progenitor Exarch says when it enters the battlefield, incubate X three times, and then we can transform target incubated token you control. These incubate tokens are perfect because they enter as zero zeros with three plus and plus ones on it, so they're just gonna get double as powerful every turn. Wasali Pride Mage, it has Exalted. Whenever a creature control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until unturned. And for one mana, we can sack this destroy target artifact or enchantment. And Ruksha Golden Club is a legendary cat soldier with vigilance for as long as this is equipped cat creatures you control have plus two plus two in double strike which is super super threatening you know they're gonna get bigger and then they get double strike and it's just gonna be terrible for your opponents next up is regal crackle saber tooth mauler and scouring bandier regal crackle is a cat creature with other cats you control get plus one plus one and have lifelink when regal cracker enters the battlefield create two one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink saber tooth mauler says at the beginning of your end step if a creature died this turn put a plus one plus one counter on Sabretooth Mauler and untap it. And Scouring Bandier enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of plus one plus one counters from this onto another target creature. Next is Scythe Leopard, Sky Hunter Strike Force, and Sun Spear Shikari. Scythe Leopard has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, it gets plus one until end of turn. Sky Hunter Strike Force has flying in melee, meaning when this creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each opponent you attack this turn. And as a lieutenant, as long as you control your commander, other creatures you control have melee. And Sun Speaker Shikari has, as long as this is equipped, it has first strike and lifelink. And lastly, we have Teamer Saber 2 and wild Nakatl. Teamer Sabretooth, for one and a green, you may return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, this gains indestructible until end of turn. And wild Nakatl says if you control a mountain, it gets plus one, plus one. But if you control a plains, you also get plus one, plus one, which is what we're really going for here. And that is it for our cats. Now we're going to move into the good stuff. And this is going to be pretty quick because the majority of our deck is cats and equipment. But starting out, we have Beast Within, Cosmic Rebirth, and Eldomri's Call. Beast Within, we destroy a permanent, and its controller makes you 3-3 three, three Beast. Cosmic Rebirth lets us return a permanent card from our graveyard. If its mana value is 3 or less, we can put it straight onto the battlefield, and then we gain 3 life. And then Eldomri's Call lets us search for any creature, put it in our hand, and then shuffle. Next up, we have Enlightened Tutor, Generous Gift, and Heroic Intervention. Enlightened Tutor lets us search for an artifact in Enchantment, reveal it, put it on top of our library. Generous Gift, similar to Beast Within, destroy target permanent and its controller makes a 3-3 green elephant and heroic intervention permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn path to exile rate of harmony and deferred protection are next path to exile is going to exile a creature and they get to go search for basic land rate of harmony says whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under control this turn draw a card which we have a lot of effects that do that and deferred protection until your next turn your life total can't change you gain protection from everything all permanents you control phase out exile to protection and our last card that's going to probably be pretty helpful in this deck is Worldly Tutor. Search your library for a creature, reveal it, shuffle your library, and put that card on top. And that is it. That is my Sovereign deck. I hope you enjoyed. What do you think? Was going Cat Tribal good? You know, was there any other cards you would have included? You know, what about my artifacts? 
please leave a comment down below. I would love to see what you have to say. In addition, if you aren't subscribed, you know, I would really appreciate you doing so. Like I said, this is episode three of seven. So we have a bunch more videos to come. And if you would help me out in another way, please consider leaving a like and sharing this video with a friend. And today's Scryfall card of the day is Mark of Mutiny. The flames of anger are hard to douse once lit. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you later, planeswalkers.